Hey, welcome to another episode of Legion Elite Motorsports. I'm your host, Isaiah. And on today's episode, we are going to do a little bit of updating um, on the 4G63 and the 4G64. Uh, and at the end of this episode, there's going to be some surprise information uh, for next episode. So um, we're definitely going to dive in. But uh, the information we're going to cover today is going to be basically about both engines and for the 4G64, some of the modifications that is mandatory so you don't blow up your engine before you even get it started. So definitely uh, get ready. We're about to dive in. Okay, so everything is out. And this block is going to be ready for the machine shop. I sorted through all of the parts and kept what we're going to use. And this is the junk pile of stuff we're not going to use. And this is all gonna go in the trash. Maybe including the crank. Um, if any of you guys can find use of it, let me know. I will put it aside for you, but we're gonna get rid of the crank. And also we're gonna get rid of some of the parts of the head. As soon as we start stripping the head down a little bit, we'll probably use, let's get to the head actually. So we're probably gonna use, we're gonna use the cam and we're gonna use the rockers. That's about it. So everything else is going to meet the garbage. Yep, definitely gonna meet the garbage. And here's the crank. Um, all of the journals look good except journal number three, which still has the bearing stuck to it. So pretty sure that's trash too. So that's the end of uh, the G63B or 4G63 engine for now until it comes back from the machine shop. Now, the main meat and potatoes for this episode is going to be the 4G64 build. So, there's a little bit of updating I wanted to update you guys about uh, pertaining to this engine. And that's pretty much about it. Um, waiting for parts. The parts should be here shortly. So, there'll be a, a continuance to this video. But, one of the most important things you have to do... Uh, when it pertains to um, the timing accessories for this is you have to get this bracket. They have a couple different versions. They all work as long as they have this bracket that uh, holds the tensioner. But I'm using the original 2.4 water pump because the outlet comes out here on the 6.3, it's blocked off and the fat pipe goes backwards. So, um, there's some grinding you have to do to this guy. You can remove it, grind it down, either or, but if you take a look, let me take this off, right? Slide it out just a little. So this goes all the way through here and sits right about there pretty much so basically this is pretty much useless so i'm going to remove it take this off cut that piece off be good to go for clearancing the water pump i should be good to go with that but besides that there's supposed to be an idler pulley here which is coming in the mail and a tensioner pulley here which is coming in the mail and they are, uh, the belt goes around this side and through this side. So when you get your block, right? Let me take this back down for a second. Here we go. Push that on. This on here for a second. So when you get your 2.4 block or th um, 2.0, 4G63, um, at least the old generation, this stud is permanently sticking out. 
and this gets in the way of the timing belt. So you have to get a nut and uh, two nuts, basically lock them together and take this out. All right, so now you'll be left with a hole and you can get an actual um, bolt, that's a 14 millimeter, to go in this hole to help lock down the, uh, the whole tensioner itself. So it has one, two, three, and that's it. So um, you wanna make sure you go ahead and do that. So that'll be modded, that'll be done and complete. Another thing you have to do, which I did one, but I didn't do the other, is you have to flip these bearings, okay? This is if you're deleting your balancer shaft, which I am. So naturally there's a hole right here that comes from the oil passage straight over, directly over, just like that. So you basically remove this bearing and move the hole. I move mine up, you can move it over here, over here, over here. Doesn't matter as long as you move that hole. And on the inside, you can see there's another one. That one also needs to be flipped. Reason being is because if you look at the bottom, right there that's an oil passage vein that goes between all cylinders including that bearing right there so that hole that's there you'll have what they call internal oil pressure bleeding and you'll have really low oil pressure and you'll blow up your motor before you get to even have any fun with it so make sure you flip these two bearings the opposite of wherever they currently are. You can have your local machine shop do it, or you could do it yourself um, with the right size sockets, more or less, and you'll be good to go. Um, the inner one is gonna take a little bit more oomph, but 100% doable. So, just a little heads up on what needs to be done there. Now, there is a balancer shaft down here that bearing right back there gets the same treatment. Okay. But I believe this one's actually a carrier bearing. So this one has no holes in it. So you don't have to do anything to that one. This one up there, which you kind of can't see it, but that one there definitely has a hole. 100%, so you wanna make sure that you flip that one. So left side of the engine needs to be flipped. This right side does not. So, um, pertaining to a balancer shaft, it does exactly that. It maintains the balance of the engine so it's nice and smooth. So when you remove them, guess what's gonna happen? Not gonna be smooth. So that brings me to my next point. The crankshaft, rods and pistons, uh, harmonic balancer, all of those goodies have to be rebalanced. You can, you can put the engine together without balancer shafts and be good to go, but it's gonna have a nice vibration that you will notice. So uh, this, these rods and pistons, um, flywheel, pressure plate, and harmonic balancer has to be balanced with each other so you don't get this harsh vibration. So that is something that we're definitely gonna do, but before we do, uh, we're going to change these pistons. So from these, which are stock, we're gonna be changing to a new set. As soon as I get here, I'm gonna show you guys that. But uh, we're gonna be changing the um, pistons. The rods are good for what we're about to do. They can handle some good power. They are forge connecting rods factory. So there's no need to uh, take it any further than that. And also we're going to be using a different 
oil filter housing. We'll talk more about that once it comes, so stay tuned for that. And we're gonna be using, sorry, we're getting back on a 4G63 for a second, but we're gonna be using this head with the turbo cam and the turbo rockers. So that's, that's the plan here, no jet valves. All right, so the goal is to complete the block. Block definitely needs to be completed so we can move on to the head. So um, that's the, the goal for that. Now with the head, it's gonna be a little different. Um, we don't need to go crazy with it. Um, it's gonna be a subtle build, so what I'm gonna do to the head is, and this is just, you know, just giving you guys a heads up of what to expect. And what to expect is gonna be stock stainless steel valves, okay? And then uh, stock ports, um, we're gonna get a fuel rail on here, intake manifold on here. Uh, I have an idea for this EGR port. As you can see, it's kind of separate and it has its own bolt. So uh, I have an idea for that, which I'm gonna explain once we actually get to modifying it. But um, yeah, so uh, that we're gonna do, um, I'm thinking some springs and retainers, you know, something simple, not too crazy. And then we add the cams and then that's it. It's not gonna be, you know, no ports, no polish, no, no anything like that, like anything wild or crazy. It's gonna be very simple because uh, we're not gonna be revving this engine out. This engine's going to yield the stock red line. Um, and on most 4G63s, that is seven and a half thousand RPM. And since this is a 4G64, I want to keep it around there. It, it should be able to yield that. Also, in the back, we have a 16 uh, orb fitting back here. And uh, this is going to house the coolant line. It's going to come down. Actually, I have to get the piece. Uh, I'm still looking for it. But I have to get the piece. It's going to come from there and custom straight to the radiator. That'll be for the upper hose. So there's this piece. Let's get a good look. And then, yep, that should conclude everything. We're gonna get some uh, nice cam gears and things of that nature and knock it out the park. Also, I had some people asking if this engine was going to go in this car Absolutely not. Absolutely no. This engine will remain to have the same uh, OEM motor, of course, built and unbuilt. Um, this one is unbuilt, uh, except everything on the outside. But you know, this one will remain to have the OEM motor. This is not. This is not getting changed. So, but um, I do have a surprise. Um, I'm going to show you guys the car that this one's going into next episode, okay? You guys are gonna see the car, you're gonna see, um, you know, everything, the interior, the exterior, everything. You're gonna see where this motor's going. So, just a little short, just a little update clip. Um, I didn't have too much for you guys this week because I'm waiting for a lot of parts, so um, yeah. So uh, stay tuned, guys, and uh, we will definitely, definitely uh, get some goodies next episode. And with that being said, I hope you guys are excited. Um, it's going to be some good stuff coming. I'm trying to put together some uh, good content for you guys. Keep it a little interesting, and uh, yeah, it should be good. But make sure you uh, jot down this information I expressed on the 4G64 to make sure you don't have any uh, premature engine disposal or de detonation or destruction, all of the above, uh, you know. Um, that knowledge is very important. And as we know here, knowledge is power. So 
with that being said, I hope you guys are excited for the next episode. We're gonna see where this new engine is going. So with that being said, I'll see you guys next episode.